Hello. Welcome. We have seen Satan as a serpent. Where he comes to deceive us. We have seen him as a lion. Where he comes to devour us. Today, we shall see him as the ruler of this world. And how he uses that position to attack us. On three occasions, Jesus referred to Satan as the ruler of the world. Now is the judgment of this world, now will the ruler of this world be cast out, John 12 31. We all remember the sin of David. How he committed adultery with Bathsheba. But very few of us remember the other sin committed by David. When David committed adultery and murder, and confessed. He said, I have sinned. But when he committed this other sin, and confessed. He said, I have sinned greatly. His sin of adultery led to the death of four people. His other sin led to the death of 70,000 people. What is this other sin of David? And what does it have to do with Satan as the ruler of this world? Before I continue, I have a favor to ask of you. If you have not already subscribed, please support our work by doing so, and share the video with family and friends. Thank you. As a ruler, what is Satan's target? Your will. He may begin by deceiving the mind, as with Eve. Or attacking the body, as with Job. But ultimately, Satan wants to bend your will towards his will. In the case of David, Satan did not attack his mind. He did not attack his body. He simply bent his will. In 1 Chronicles 21 we read. Satan was against Israel, and he caused David to count the people of Israel. So David said to Joab and the commanders of the troops, Go and count all the Israelites from Beersheba to Dan. Then tell me so I will know how many there are. Verses 7 and 8. David had done something God had said was wrong, so God punished Israel. Then David said to God, I have sinned greatly by what I have done. Now, I beg you to forgive me, your servant, because I have been very foolish. David's had chalked many victories. Now Satan will use that to bring him down. We must never underestimate the power of the will in the Christian life. Too many Christians have an intellectual relationship with God. That satisfies the mind but never changes the heart. They are knowledgeable in the Word. They may even hold discussions about the Bible. But when it comes to living it, they fail. Some also have emotional feelings toward God. They only feel the presence of God when they are in an emotional high. But feel God has abandoned them when they are on an emotional low. Our obedience to God should stem from our intellect, our emotions, and our will. We are to love the Lord our God with all our hearts, our emotions, and with all our mind, our intellect, and all our strength, our will. That is why a dedicated Christian obeys the word. Whether he feels it or not. He prays whether he feels it or not. A Christian who operates with a steady spiritual will. Lives a victorious Christian life. It is your will that must direct your feelings toward God. Satan's original sin was a sin of the will. Five times he says, I will. Satan wants us to serve him. He wants our will to submit to his will. What tools does he use? Pride. Satan uses the victories that David had chalked on the battlefield to get to David. David won many victories, including a coveted crown that was placed on his head. Satan used these victories to inflate David's ego. Satan used the same tool against King Uzziah. In 2 Chronicles 26 we read. 
Then all the people of Judah took Uzziah, who was sixteen years old, and made him king in place of his father Amaziah. As long as he sought the Lord, God gave him success. But after Uzziah became powerful, his pride led to his downfall. He was unfaithful to the Lord his God, and entered the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar of incense. Uzziah, like David, won many battles but lost the war. They allowed Satan to use their successes to bend their will. Pride goes before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall, Proverbs 16:18. When David committed adultery, he committed a sin of the flesh. When he numbered Israel, he committed a sin of the spirit. That is why Paul warns us in 2 Corinthians 7 1. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Christians are not to commit either the sin of the flesh or the spirit. Too often, Christians who do not commit sins of the flesh are quick to judge those who fall to sins of the flesh. All the while, they themselves may be guilty of sins of the spirit. The prodigal son was guilty of the sin of the flesh. But his proud, unforgiving elder brother was guilty of the sin of the spirit. The woman caught in adultery was guilty of the sin of the flesh. But the proud, self-righteous Pharisees who dragged her before Jesus, were guilty of the sins of the spirit. Pride glorifies man and robs God. Those to whom much has been given fight an immense battle to ward off pride. Pride is a weapon that Satan wields with great skill. That is why Peter writes in 1 Peter 5 5-6. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. That is why immature Christians are not to be put in positions of leadership. Else they become conceited and fall into the trap of the devil, 1 Timothy 3 6. What is Satan's purpose for making us proud? To make us independent of God. Man was created to be dependent on God. For in him we live and move and have our being, Acts 17:28. He seeks to make us the creator instead of the creature. If we believe Satan's lie, we will be like God. If Satan can get you to think and act independently of God's will, then he can control your will and control your life. You will think you are working independently. But in reality, you are just a puppet in the hands of Satan. Success can inflate the ego. That we think we can do without God. Beware when you think you have arrived. When you eat and are satisfied, be careful not to forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, Deuteronomy 6 9-10. What are our defenses against the ruler of this world? The indwelling spirit of God. Pride is such a powerful spirit that only a stronger power can give us victory. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now even more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act on behalf of his good purpose, Philippians 2 12-13. Only God, the Holy Spirit working in and through you can bend your will so that you live to please God. The Holy Spirit can work in and through you. When your mind, body, and will are yielded to Him. God bless you.